Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl LP and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, which most of you should be because I just started this channel last month, I'd like to talk about all things skincare. If you're interested in skincare, even in the slightest bit, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. I would love to have you guys here so that we can all further educate ourselves and navigate through the very confusing world of skincare together. As a disclaimer, I am in no way, shape, or form an expert. I am merely another passionate skincare consumer with a background in clinical research and I try a ton of products so you guys don't have to. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I am constantly, constantly advocating for people to wear sunscreen daily. But even though I do this, I still feel like there are a ton of people who don't wear sunscreen at all. So in today's video, I definitely am going to do a deep dive into sunscreen and hopefully it will further convince some of you to finally start wearing it and then creating the habit of putting it on daily. Whenever I mention sunscreen, I feel like people are thinking about the sunscreens that we grew up wearing. You know, the ones that have the thick, sticky, oily consistency, and the ones that have that very distinct sunscreen smell. And don't forget the white cast. So if sunscreen has all of these properties, why would you want to put it on your face, neck, and ears every day? And I mean, depending on what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you do want to put sunscreen on the parts of your body that are going to be exposed to the sun. Sunscreen formulations today are pristine in comparison to what we had about 10 to 20 years ago. Wow, that really just aged me. Like seriously, some of these formulations are just like chef's kiss. <laughs> So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the types of UV rays that the sun emits, the sunscreen labels that are typically found on sunscreens, the types of sunscreens that are available out on the market, and going over some of my favorite sunscreen recommendations. There are several types of rays that the sun emits, but the most damaging to our skin are UV rays. The two that reach the Earth's surface and that you've commonly heard of or seen are UVA and UVB rays. While UVA and UVB rays differ in how they affect our skin, they both still do damage. Starting with UVA rays. UVA rays are more prominent in sunlight than UVB rays and can penetrate more deeply into the skin. UVA rays are known to play a greater role in the premature aging of our skin. And then we have UVB rays. UVB rays are typically known for producing sunburn. They penetrate the most outer layers of our skin and with any type of overexposure, UVB rays can cause tanning, burning, and in some cases, even blistering can occur. While both types of rays play a role in the formation of skin cancer, UVB rays have actually been shown to play the greater role in skin cancer as well as the formation in malignant melanoma. Now I could go into much, much greater detail, but I do want to keep this fairly simple and easy to follow. So that is UVA rays and UVB rays in short. Now moving on to sunscreen labels. Have you ever shopped for sunscreen and wondered what these labels actually mean? Like what does SPF even stand for? What does broad spectrum mean? And what are the PA++++ pluses on some of these sunscreens? These are the labels that we typically see on sunscreens that are available out on the market, but what do they actually mean to us as the consumer. Starting with SPF, this stands for sun protection factor and it's usually followed by a number. Whenever you see the SPF label on sunscreens, this means that it's going to protect our skin from the UVB rays. So this specific sunscreen label basically tells us how much UV radiation is required to produce sunburn on protected skin while wearing sunscreen relative to the amount of UV radiation that is required to produce sunburn on unprotected skin or when you're not wearing sunscreen. Did I lose you guys? <laughs> Generally, as the SPF value increases, so does the amount of protection. A common misconception is that the SPF number solely correlates to the amount of time spent in the sun while wearing sunscreen before getting burned versus the amount of time spent in the sun without wearing sunscreen. Now, not to say that SPF isn't related to time because it definitely is, 
but it also depends on the amount of UV radiation that you're exposed to. So there are a few things to take into consideration. For example, the intensity of the sun's radiation is much stronger midday than it is in the morning. So one hour in the sun at 9 a.m. can equate to 10 to 15 minutes in the sun at 1 p.m. Other factors to take into consideration are the amount of sunscreen initially applied, as well as the amount of sunscreen that is reapplied throughout the day. Now, because of all these factors that you have to take into consideration, SPF cannot directly tell us how much time we can spend in the sun before burning. Rather, it informs the consumer that an SPF of 50 is going to provide much more protection than an SPF with 15. A good rule of thumb is to reapply your sunscreen every two hours, but of course that also depends on what you're going to be doing throughout the day. Now, since SPF only protects us against UVB rays, what about UVA rays? Whenever you see broad spectrum on sunscreen labels, that is going to be the label that lets the consumer know that the sunscreen is going to protect you from UVA rays. Now, once researchers understood the damaging effects of UVA rays, sunscreen manufacturers began adding active ingredients into sunscreens that would protect consumers from both UVA and UVB rays. Across the broad broader spectrum, which is where the term comes from. You'll mainly see broad spectrum used in sunscreens that are manufactured and produced in countries like the US, the EU, Canada, as well as China. But what about other countries? This segues us into the last type of label that you'll see on sunscreens available out on the market, and that's the PA rating system. Sometimes you'll see sunscreens that have like PA plus or PA plus plus, or PA++++ or <laughs> PA++++. But what the heck do all of these pluses even mean? So this PA rating system was developed in Japan to tell the consumers how much UVA protection the sunscreen provides. The pluses range from one to four, so the more pluses it has, the higher protection the sunscreen offers. The amount of pluses you need really, again, depends on what you're going to be doing throughout the day. For example, if I'm working from home inside all day next to a sunscreen that gets indirect sunlight, then PA plus or PA plus plus is sufficient enough. But of course, if I'm going to be spending a majority of my day outside, then I would wanna look for PA plus 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 or PA with four pluses. So fun fact about this rating system is that it's not approved for use in the US or the EU. So you'll notice it's the sunscreens that are formulated, produced, and manufactured in Japan, Korea, and other Asian countries that have this sunscreen label on their products. So now that we have a good understanding about what types of labels are on sunscreens, let's move into the types of sunscreens that are available out on the market. There are two types of sunscreens out on the market I guess technically three, but the first type is physical slash mineral sunscreens and they are actually used interchangeably. And then you have your chemical sunscreens and then you have a combination of the two, which makes it three types of sunscreens. Starting with physical sunscreens, they contain active mineral ingredients like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. They work by creating a physical barrier on our skin to protect us from the UVA and UVB rays hence why it's called a physical or mineral sunscreen. Physical sunscreens work by scattering and reflecting UV light in addition to absorbing UV light and then converting it into heat or another form of energy. A lot of times you'll see articles breaking down the basics of sunscreens and forget to include that physical sunscreens in fact absorb UV light just like chemical sunscreens do. Studies have shown that they actually do more of this than the scattering and reflecting. Now the downside to these types of sunscreens and I guess what people usually associate sunscreens with is that because of the properties of the zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, they do tend to leave a white cast. But like I mentioned, there are physical sunscreen options available out on the market that don't leave the chalky white cast. Now moving on to chemical sunscreens. Now, these types of sunscreens contain carbon-based compounds that create a chemical reaction by converting UV rays into heat and then releasing that heat from our skin into the environment. Chemical sunscreens can contain active ingredients like avobenzone, which blocks UVA rays, oxybenzone, which blocks UVA and UVB rays, 
and octinoxate, which blocks UVB rays. And then there are a list of others, but these are the three main active chemical ingredients that you will typically see in these types of sunscreens. The reason why people will gravitate more towards using chemical sunscreens and mainly the reason why I use chemical sunscreens is because of their lightweight texture and consistency and they don't leave a white cast. I do want to note that there is a slight downside to chemical sunscreens and it's that it can be a bit overwhelming for those with sensitive skin and may even burn slightly upon application. So if you're someone who has sensitive skin or if you think you have sensitive skin, I would definitely patch test any chemical sunscreens before applying it all over your face. Now moving on to which types of sunscreens work best for which skin type. So this is just my opinion and please don't drag me down for this. <laughs> I don't think there is a right or wrong answer to this one. With sunscreens, you definitely have to test out several different types before finding one that you absolutely love. Someone with dry skin can definitely use a physical sunscreen and someone with oily skin can definitely use a chemical sunscreen. It's really all about preference in consistency, in texture, and if you want a white cast or if you don't mind the white cast. I think the most important thing that I want to highlight about finding a sunscreen that's right for you is that you have to like how it feels. My favorite sunscreens are the ones that I actually enjoy putting on in the morning and reapplying throughout the day because I love the way it feels on my skin. Once you find a sunscreen that feels good to put on, you'll find yourself getting into the habit of actually putting it on every single day. Quite honestly, it's something that I look forward to because I just love the way that the sunscreens feel on my skin. Now, I know this wasn't the answer that most of you are looking for, but I will definitely link a few videos from other skincare content creators where they talk about sunscreens that they think are best for oily skin types or combination skin types, dry skin types, and so on and so forth. Finally, getting into the part of the video that everyone has probably been waiting for. If you didn't fast forward through the video just to get to this part, I... I just want to give you a hug. Like if we could hug, I would just want to give you a hug. Like thank you for listening to me speak. So I'm going to be going through my favorite sunscreen recommendations and I have a bunch for you guys. Now all of these sunscreens that I am about to show you guys do fall into a specific criteria. The first criteria is that the sunscreens pass the two finger rule. This rule was actually coined by an esthetician based in New York. Her name is Tiara Willis. I'll link her info down below. So this two finger rule is basically applying sunscreen on two fingers worth and basically just ensures that you're putting on the correct or advised amount of sunscreen. I usually have to put three because like big forehead problems. <laughs> the second criteria is that all these sunscreens do not have a white cast, so they will be chemical sunscreens or a combination of the two. And the third criteria is that they fall under a specific type of consistency. So I never like the greasy film or the super thick textures. So these sunscreens that I'm going to mention have a lightweight texture or a milky watery consistency that just blends into the skin very seamlessly. Obviously have to start out by mentioning my favorite, favorite sunscreen of all time, the Beach Shield by Crave Beauty. This is the sunscreen that I recommend to people like 99% of the time if they can wear chemical sunscreens. The Beach Shield is a chemical sunscreen with a very lightweight, milky, almost fluid-like texture. Because it's a chemical sunscreen, it's going to have absolutely zero white cast. Now this has a very faint smell to it, but it doesn't have that typical sunscreen smell. I don't really know how to describe the smell of this, but once you disperse it all throughout your face and your skin, it definitely disappears. I will say that this does leave your skin with a dewy finish. So if you're someone who has oily skin and you particularly don't like that finish, then this one probably isn't for you. If you have sensitive skin, again, I would just patch test this before a full application. Now on the bottles that you buy in the US, you'll notice that it doesn't state the SPF or level of PA, and it's because it actually uses filters that are not approved for use in the US yet. The company has to label and market it as something else other than a sunscreen, and they actually market it as an antioxidant day fluid, which I actually think is really great. If you were to buy this product in Korea though, 
you will see that it has an SPF followed by a number and then the PA++++. I found that this works great on most skin types. I have dry and dehydrated skin, so this one is great for me and I love the dewy finish that it has. And this is actually even a favorite for my boyfriend. He has oily acne prone skin and I actually had to buy him his own bottles because I noticed that he was using mine, so I figured I would get him his own. Now moving on to two of my favorite drugstore sunscreens, and they are the Black Girl Sunscreen. This is a moisturizing sunscreen lotion for the face and body. It has an SPF of 30 and broad spectrum. This sunscreen is infused with jojoba and avocado, so these two contribute to the moisturizing properties. They do have the kids version, with an SPF of 50 and I actually prefer using that one for my face instead and I like to use this one for my body. I will note that this does have that sunscreen smell, but it's not overbearing. And then my second favorite drugstore sunscreen is by Neutrogena, the Invisible Daily Defense Solution. It's broad spectrum, has an SPF of 30 and is oxybenzone free. Just like the black girl sunscreen, this does not leave a white cast whatsoever. This does, though, have that sunscreen fragrance. Think of mixing that sunscreen smell with grapefruit. This is what this smells like. And this is a chemical sunscreen, so if you have sensitive skin, I would probably just stray away from this. Something else I want to note about the sunscreen is that because of the fragrance, it can get a little overbearing around the eye area so I would just really be careful when you're applying this to your face. Moving on to the next sunscreen, this one is by Neogen and it's the Neogen Daylight Protection Sunscreen. It has SPF 50 with a PA++++. Now what I really like about this sunscreen in particular is that it's kind of the best of both worlds because it's a physical and a chemical sunscreen. This sunscreen contains zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, which are the physical active ingredients. And then you have the active chemical ingredients in the sunscreen, which are octanoxate and tinosorb S. There are also hydrating ingredients in the sunscreen like rose and raspberry extracts. So if you have dry skin, you can definitely benefit from this extra boost of hydration, but really all skin types can benefit from an extra boost of hydration. The consistency of this one is completely different from the Beat Shield. The appearance of it is much thicker in consistency and almost has a mousse lotion-like texture but it blends into the skin very seamlessly. It doesn't leave any type of white cast and it doesn't feel greasy upon application, so that's always a plus. There is a slight scent to it and the way I can describe it is that it smells like a very faint tiger balm. It's not overbearing at all, but just something to think about if you don't particularly like fragrance. Because this doesn't have the white cast and it has the physical active ingredients in it, this is a sunscreen that is ideal for all skin types, including sensitive skin types. It's also ideal for all types of skin pigments, which is a plus. Next up, I have the Super Goop Glow Screen. It's broad spectrum has an SPF of 40 and a PA++++. This one is another chemical sunscreen and you'll actually be able to tell which is the chemical and which is a physical sunscreen because they do list the active ingredients on the back of the packaging, which is great because right off the bat, you know which filters and which active ingredients are used in this specific formulation or in the other ones that I've just mentioned. Scent-wise, it has little to no fragrance. It does have a slight sunscreen smell, but again, after you disperse it throughout your face and your skin, it disappears. Once you squeeze it out of the bottle, you will notice that there is a slight tint to it and it's actually a little bit darker than my current skin tone. So I would only use this on days where I know I'm going to be doing like a full face of makeup. The sunscreen does have a glowy finish, almost kind of like it has tiny light reflecting particles in it, kind of like how highlighter has reflecting particles, but not to that same intensity. So this is why I prefer to wear this one on days where I am wearing makeup. If this one isn't an option for you, you can definitely try out the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. That is also a chemical sunscreen and it has absolutely zero white cast and it comes out clear so it's suitable for all skin types and skin pigments. Then we have my two favorite sunscreens from Paula's Choice. The first one is the Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid. 
This has broad spectrum as well as an SPF of 50. This one is great for those with normal, oily, or combination skin types. And then the second Paul's Choice sunscreen I have is from their Clear line. It's the Ultra Light Daily Hydrating Fluid. It has broad spectrum as well as an SPF of 30 plus. And because this sunscreen is from their Clear line, this would be a great option for those who have blemish prone or acne prone skin. Now these are both chemical sunscreens, but I found that even sensitive skin types can use them. And what I really love about these two is that they both have a very water-like fluid consistency. They definitely pass the two finger test and because they're chemical sunscreens, of course, they're not going to leave a white cast. Now I have two more favorite sunscreens that I actually don't physically have with me, but I thought they were definitely worth mentioning in this video. And one of them is the Biore UV Watery Essence. I believe it has an SPF of 50 and a PA plus, 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 plus. This sunscreen is like no other sunscreen that I've mentioned previously. It has a very watery like consistency and comes out clear out of the bottle. So it's perfect for any type of skin pigment and skin type. Upon application, the sunscreen disperses like there is just water bursting onto your skin and it just feels so nice. And I really wish I had this to show you guys, but I'll definitely link it down below as well. And then the last sunscreen that I don't have with me is by Papa Recipe and it's the Bombi Moist Sun Essence. It has an SPF of 50 and a PA++++. Now this sun essence is very lightweight. It doesn't leave a white cast whatsoever. And what I really like about this sunscreen in particular, and just like the Neogen one, it is a physical and chemical sunscreen. So it's going to be great for even those who have sensitive skin. And it also has ingredients like honey, propolis, and royal jelly extract to nourish the skin. So that rounds up my favorite types of sunscreens. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it somewhat helpful. Let me know in the comments below if I didn't mention any of your favorite sunscreens. I would definitely love to try out more. I've tried out a ton. <laughs> If you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. I would love to have you guys here. You can find me on all of my other social medias, which I will also link in the description box below. I will also be linking the product recommendations in the description box below as well for you guys. And that's all I have for today. So I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.